What's up everybody? This is Dean from Music Red One and today we're going to be checking out the brand new microphone from Shure, the MV7 podcast microphone. So this is a brand new microphone from Shure and it's really focused on podcasters and people in new media, streamers, and let's just get right into the box. You see, welcome to better sound. How do you get it out? Woo! It's a box in a box. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, everything's backwards. Quick start guide, cool. Yeah, little thing to tell you to remember to install the app. Download the free Motive Desktop app. More on that later, let's put that aside. Here is the microphone, whoa. This thing is heavy. Oh, it's actually got like decent weight for being a budget microphone. It's actually like, I didn't think they can do it. And it's got this awesome silver finish. Holy cow, let's put that aside for now. See what else we get in the box. Get a lot of cardboard. Warranty, blah, blah, blah. Aha. This is what we're looking for now. These are the cables that you get with this one. It seems that it comes with two USB cables. It comes with a USB type A, uh, to micro USB to a USB C. We gotta open that. Boink. And there are the USB cables you get. Actually, no, you just get one USB C to one micro V. Hmm. All right. Oh, never mind. There it is. Oh, so you don't get an XLR cable with it. You just get USB to it. Interesting. All right, so that's cables, who cares, whatever. This is the microphone. This is the one we're all here for. So it's got an all metal construction, which I didn't think they would do on such a budget oriented mic. It's got the built-in pop filter. This is a dynamic microphone and the cool little shock mount, just like on the SM7B, which this resembles immensely, other than the silver finish and big Shure logo. Um, on the back, you'll find the XLR connector, the USB connector, and the headphone jack connector, which you can use directly on the microphone to monitor, which is actually pretty cool. And then at the top, we have the touchpad here. Ooh, feels nice. We have the touchpad up here and a mute button, which is actually very handy if you're streaming or if you're doing any podcast or if you're doing that kind of thing. It's actually very convenient having a mic mute button directly on the mic and not say on your interface. And even some interfaces don't have it, so people have to resort to software. So just having it directly on the mic is very convenient if you need to mute for whatever reason. So now we're going to plug it in. We're going to install the software and we're going to test it out. So now you're hearing my voice through the new MV7. So let's talk about some of the specs. It has both an XLR and a USB out, which you can actually use to record simultaneously, which is really convenient because while you're editing your high fidelity XLR track, you can use a slightly lower quality USB track kind of as a reference while you're in the editing process. This thing has a large diaphragm, just like the SM7B, which this thing like really resembles. But the benefit of that is that it reduces background noise. So if you're podcasting, you're working with guests, you're shuffling in your chair or you're streaming and your keyboard is making some noise, the odds of this mic picking it up are very low. The mic comes in with a built-in pop filter, which is really convenient because you don't need to buy a separate one. And it also has an integrated headphone monitoring jack, which is also very convenient, especially for people who don't want to have a computer nearby and they just want to be able to monitor. And you can adjust all of that in the software later. It has a frequency response of 50 Hertz to 16 kilohertz, which is very wide and also offers 24 bit recording. So how does this thing stack up against the SM7B, which it resembles so much? Well, the SM7B really, it can record up to 60 decibels of clean gain before distorting, which is really convenient if you're recording, say a guitar amp, a guitar cabinet, a loud vocalist like a metal singer or a rapper, or even drums. However, where this thing really comes to shine is in its price. It's a lot less expensive and it's a lot more focused in on the mid range for vocal applications like podcasts and streaming. It also has the versatility of two extra ports on the back as in the USB and the headphone monitoring, which offers a lot of functionality that the SM7B doesn't have. And all of these capabilities can be expanded on in the software that comes for free with the microphone which you buy. It's called Sure Motive and we're gonna go take a look at it right now.
All right, so we're here open in Logic, and what we have here on the right, this is the Shure Plus Motive. Uh, all I had to do was plug in the microphone via USB in this case with the USB-C cable that came in the box. And here we are right now on the auto level. So in auto, this is pretty much for, I think most people are gonna use this section. What's great is it gives you some of the physical controls that you have on the touch strip, but it gives you access to them in this window, just like the mic mute which just muted me for a second there, as well as your monitoring mix. I have headphones plugged directly into the microphone and I can drag this more toward the microphone directly or hear what the playback is getting more directly because there could be some latency and I wanna be aware of that if that's happening. And right now I have it on the near mic profile because I'm close to the microphone. Um, but what's really cool is there's this version here called FAR. So if you have a guest, I'm now much further from the microphone as the person is indicating here. Um, if say there's someone who has not fantastic mic technique in your podcast, well, you can adjust that for them so that you still get a decent capture of their voice even though they're farther. But if you're nice and near, you get obviously better fidelity and better sound. Down here for tone, I prefer to leave it natural for my voice, but depending on your voice, you could prefer dark. See the dark profile, will really increase the low end. It'll really bring out that low end, give you kind of that podcast sound that most people are familiar with. And then you have bright, which will really emphasize the top end. Um, so depending on your voice, these all change drastically. However, for most people and for myself, I feel like natural is the better place to be. And while you're in auto level, the touch strip can basically do only two functions. It can adjust your monitor mix. See, I'm now not using the cursor and I'm using the touch strip on the microphone to adjust the mix. And it can mute the microphone with the mute key that's indicated on the microphone. You can also load and save your presets. Over here in manual mode, this is where you can really get in depth. So obviously you can save your presets, you have your access to your mic mute, but in this version, you have access to your mic gain. So now this is a function available on your microphone. If you click on your microphone twice and all the lights turn green. And basically in this case, you can use the touch strip and not the cursor to up or reduce the gain to where you need it to be in your circumstance. You can also just use it in the window. That's why this is very convenient in this software. You also have access to your monitor mix, which again, you can do on the microphone, but it's also very convenient having it here. Now in the manual mode, you also have access to the EQ settings. Personally, for me and my recordings, I prefer to add EQ later on in a plugin. However, you can just add it here built in. I prefer the flat EQ, but here they have a high pass, a presence boost, and a high pass and presence boost. So we're gonna go through what those sound like. So a high pass is basically just a low roll off, um, depending on how you see it. Uh, this will work in certain circumstances and for who needs them. This is a presence boost, emphasizing a little more of the top end, which is kind of nice. And this is a surprising one, but a shocking amount of people seem to like the high pass and presence boost. I seem to like it a lot. I think it sounds good. If I was on a stream, uh, depending on what I'm doing or what's going on around me, sometimes these can just come in handy having them on display like this. Um, where this differs from the SM7B is on the SM7B on the rear, you have access to physical switches to alter the EQ that's coming directly from the microphone. But on this version of the microphone, you have it in the software. So the software really expands and adds this functionality that you otherwise wouldn't have if you weren't using the software. Now, the limiter is very nice. The limiter will basically only ever actuate once you hit that limit. So if you're playing video games and you scream, uh, this limiter will probably bless your audience without piercing their ears. And now finally at the bottom here, we have the compressor and you have three levels of it, uh, four if you include off. Right now it's off. And basically the more you add this compressor, the higher it'll raise the noise floor but it also give you that more radio-like sound. So I would reduce my mic gain a little bit and I would add a light compressor and it'll add more of a compressed sound to the recording. Let's go up to a medium compressor. We're getting more to that radio kind of style voice and then heavy, I personally would not use this or I would add a compressor. Otherwise, like in the DAW, 
but this is what the heavy compressor sounds like so it's much louder at this point um but or you can just go straight off it gets a lot louder because you're upping the nose floor as you play at the compressor so the manual section of this software is very useful and it's very convenient if you're streaming or recording straight into a DAW or you're recording a podcast Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you're interested in the new MV7, you can check it out at musicred1.com. And if you're interested in buying one, we got some Halloween spooky sales going on, so you might be able to catch one of those. Slap that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.